So, I believe highly produced, sustainable, super teams, built-in feedback. You must be able to make it better all the time. Let's look at highly produced. Here's an engineering design textbook that was a good one. Two publishers and two authors. Big deal. Here's the credits at the end of the movie Chicago. I compressed it, okay? <laughs> it was going to take all day. I got tired counting. There's over 700 names. There's 50 to 75 companies. They're all the best in the world. Why have we never done anything of that quality level in education? Why don't we have these super teams? Why don't we have content experts? Sure. But why don't we have storytellers and people who understand all of the different ways to communicate that everybody on the planet is accustomed to? for other kinds of storytelling. The budget for a textbook is invisible. A movie is $100 million. If people learn what's in the textbook, it's a really big deal. The movie doesn't matter in time and space. I believe the textbooks are roughly where 45 degree, 45 RPM records were about 50 years ago. Which would you rather have? Yale's card catalog in the library? or Google. It's a no-brainer for me. So some examples, just a couple. John Belcher, colleague, does field theory stuff at MIT. And there's a very small number of people on the planet who could read his papers and understand what magnetic fields look like. But when he works with animators, he makes it accessible to sixth graders. It's very accessible information. I believe if you understand this, then maybe later in life you're much more likely to be able to take advantage of some of the abstractions. But we do it the other way around. If you have not looked at the inner life of a cell, you should. Howard Hughes Medical Foundation and Harvard published this movie. I took some clips out of it. You really should download a high quality version and, and watch it. It's about eight minutes long. This is about the formation of arteriosclerosis. Microvilli covers the surface of both this cell types. Is animators working with biologists and physicians getting their best cut at what's going on in our body. The bilayer is enriched in sphingolipids and phosphatidylcholine. While the plus ends of some microtubules extend toward the plasma membrane, imagine trying to illustrate that by drawing on the blackboard of protofilaments from other microtubules, causing their rapid plus end depolymerization. Do you believe that these things are in your body right now? Vesicles travel to and from the plasma. We're membrane. full of them. The directional movement of these cargo. It took millions of dollars to come to understand this much about the biology of a human cell. Let's spend some money to make it accessible. So I believe that animation, interactive stuff, continuous updates. <coughs> feedback so that you can close the loop. Every <coughs> week you meet and say, people are having trouble with this, let's fix it. Stop grading homework. Stop grading quizzes, things that have discrete answers. Make school-to-school -school comparisons just part of the fabric of what you're doing. I believe this would be such a super research platform that in, uh, if, if you had 200,000 users, you could do more educational research in a week than is typically done now in a decade. So I think for the first time in human history, we could have compound growth on the quality of learning materials. I think that is a really big deal. It's one of those inflection points. Now, if I look at the United States and look at the economics of this, let's look at, in the United States, 77% of the college freshmen need remedial math. Whoa! It's clear that part of the system's not working. 600,000 in 1992, the most recent data that I could find, 600,000 people take calculus. 42% fail. Don't you think there's a cost to society there? If you take any reasonable estimate of the cost of a college student semester course, $2,000 is very conservative estimate. 
it's a half a billion dollars. It's a big opportunity cost. Let's take another look. Let's imagine that you were going to spend $50 million and get started. And you wanted to make this investment and recover it in 10 years and have 10 million a year in operating expense to run this system so that it was very well done. If you only got those 200,000 students that failed calculus to be your customers and charged them $100 each to save their $2,000, I'm not saying you can make it all go away, but you could cut it in half, that you'd recover your money. And if you look at the size of, even in the United States, the market for the basic codified core courses that populate most of the first two years in school, the market is really large. So the economic model makes sense. So who's going to do it? Well, it is, as we say in the United States right now, shovel ready. You could start doing it now. And I believe getting endorsements from some of the national organizations, and I'm working on them. Uh, several are enthusiastic. I think presidents of maybe three very highly ranked colleges or universities, maybe three that have some special interest that want to push. Maybe. Uh, three of the major companies that should be involved. I don't know which ones, but Google, for example, already has a whole bunch of stuff that could be integrated into such a system. And maybe you form a 5013C corporation that is the shell, and that's where it starts and works. Maybe $2 million from all those partners. $10 million to get started planning. I think planning is really important. The, the core of this thing must be versatile. <coughs> Very well understood. Maybe there's two modules you start, the mechanical engineering flavor of calculus and differential equations and the lecture and visual learner version of those as a way to start. Anyone should be able to consume the stuff in whatever format they like, should adapt to learning styles. And at the end of two or three years, take a look. I believe such a thing should have versatile architecture. If you have your own particular version of something you really like, write an app, plug it in, either make it free or sell it. I believe the world's text, which is what I think I'm talking about, is an incredibly powerful cultural influence, at least as powerful as religion. If this happened, then here at Chambers, Chalmers and everywhere else in the university, we could get back to focusing on education, which is that really complex stuff. I believe we have to do it because I want to die proud of having been an engineer. And if we don't restore professionalism to what we're doing, it ain't going to happen. Thank you. <laughs>